Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 49 of the F Reality podcast. This is our first ever episode under the new name so we're all really excited about this one. So if you're new to the show it is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on this YouTube channel, Facebook and on Twitch. You can tune into the show live at 7pm in Europe, 6pm in the UK and 12 midday in Central US. If you missed the live stream you don't need to worry we re-upload the whole video to this YouTube channel or you can check out the audio version, which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and on SoundCloud. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. But let me introduce you to the team. First up, this guy likes to live in a super villain's lair in VR, of course. It is Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? I'm doing fine. I'm very excited. Congratulations, everyone, with the new podcast. I'm I'm very happy, you know, like seriously. Yeah, this is this is great. It's really nice. Yeah. It feels so fresh. You know, we're on a new platform. Well, three new platforms all being streamed at the same time. It does. Yeah, yeah, very exciting indeed. Kind of a fresh new intro. I'd love to know your thoughts, by the way, you know, in, in the chat. If you like the new intro, please let us know. We'd love to know your feedback. Um, so, yeah, it's been an interesting six months, but we're finally here and we're doing it. And you got your little hat on. Whoa, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that so, was a, well, an explosive intro for me there that was amazing. it's, it's gonna, gonna be hard to top now. that one god that yeah, was a yeah. bit much ga- was gunpowder so <laughs> loud <laughs> but uh happy happy new podcast everyone happy new, happy podcast. Podcast. Happy new podcast congrats guys congrats <laughs> so let me introduce you to the rest of the team then next up everybody say howdy to rowdy the fastest youtuber alive how you doing dude you're right i'm doing good I'm in a, a new room. Uh, I'll tell some more wow. about that uh, a bit later. But uh, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm actually doing great. Yeah. yeah. And, and and Rowdy's sailing this fine ship today, so he's in control of it. So you know he's doing a he's doing a cracking job. Nerves. Okay. So I know, I know. First episode, nerves. It feels like they're kicking back in again. I feel like yeah. we're at the beginning again. Oh. But okay. So next up, some like to say he's zinging. Some like to say he's crossing, but either way, he likes to put his grey matter to the test. It is, of course, Zimtok5. How you doing, dude? You all right? Oh, I'm lovely, Mike. But like everyone else, you know, it's uh, feel, feels like it's new again. It's all the first time. This is like our first date, and there's it four is. dudes. You know, I don't know what I don't I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Where's my hands gonna go? You know? Yeah, it is. It, keep it, it does feel. There. Keep, feels... keep them just over there. Like you know, we, we don't need all that stuff. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like exciting, scary, all at the same time, That's but cool. it, it, it's great. It's great. I'm glad yeah. we're finally here, put it that way. So uh, last but by no means least, myself, the host of the show, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Magic Leap, a surprise release this week. We talk about the specs and our thoughts on this headset so far. We're also going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch VR. We discuss the secret VR mode hidden within the Nintendo Switch, uncovered by a modder from the Switch community this week. Uh, but first up, let's find out what everyone's been up to uh, this week, and they can highlight their favorite part of the week and, and talk about it. So uh, first up, let's uh, kick it over to Nathy to find out what he's been up to uh, this week and something maybe you want to share with everyone. Well, I haven't played that much because the weather was still extremely hot. Uh, uh, one of the games I wanted to highlight is is definitely <laughs> Rise of the Gunters. <laughs> oh, no. Because, uh, I played that with Mike. And it was kind of cool because we were fighting against Sixers on Planet Doom. And I don't know, I was kind of into like the Ready Player One like like scene in a way. Yeah, it was kind of like an ideal time to play it because the DVD and the Blu-ray just came out. So the kind of hype around it was there again. But um, it was kind of like, it's a reskin of Gunheart, right? It is. Yeah, the, yeah. the developers of Gunheart made it. Uh, it's it's free by the way you can play it on steam it's uh, under the uh, oasis app as far as i know if you search for yes. ready player one on steam you will find it and yep. uh, you can play it with a friend it's like a let's say 10 15 minute uh, adventure it's a it's a wave shooter but then with a little bit of that ready player one like sauce over it where you have like the the coins you need to collect and you have space invaders coming into your screen you need to shoot and you can you can power up you can just beat up as many sixers as you want and and Nate, can you turn your volume up a little bit? You're a bit on the quiet uh, side, I think. 
Hello. But like um, what Nathy was saying about this experience, the thing what, with it was that it is only three levels, but then again, it is free after all. So you can't really complain. But what yeah. I would have liked is is more that kind of ready player one vibe because we didn't get to customize our avatar at all. And also like by the end, you didn't get like an epic boss fight with like IROC or Sorrento or anything like that. No. It was just like waves of sixes. Once you've completed them, then you finish, you get rewarded yeah. with a key. And the interesting thing was that they rewarded us both with a bronze key but there was no bronze key in Ready no, Player that's One. That's true. <laughs> it was a copper key. You freaking noobs. You <laughs> didn't know anything. Insane. And it's yeah. like it, it, like it's out for like six months and it's still in there for some reason. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Exactly. That's so nice. it was kind of, kind of interesting, but, you know, yeah, it's kind of a bit meh. But it's free after all, so you can't really complain too much. Yeah. So let's find out what Zim's been up to then. Uh, what do you want to talk about this week, dude? I have loads, uh, but I'll pick one. Let's see, which one sure. should I pick? I'll go with... Um, the one I should go with is is actually the game that I, I mentioned before because uh, I've changed my rating on it, uh, which is The Walking Dead Our World. Uh, I've been playing fake tons mm. of this AR game um, to the point where I was out at you know 2 a.m. hunting zombies in the pitch black, <laughs> walking into areas I've never been around, around my locale just to take down my friend who's in Belgium because uh, it looked like he was going to try to grab an award. So there's a lot of like competition in the game. You can also build safe houses and your name goes on there and then you kind of save survivors and bring them back to your safe house. And so, you know, if you're going around your local area, you can get to know other people and you can group up in teams of 25. So that for me, out of everything I played this week was the thing that really has, um, has really hooked me. And how and is so that one called? It's, it's a game that I'd recommend others. So it's the walking dead, our world. Uh, and it, it has an AR element to it, which I think is totally throwaway. Just like it, it's useless. The AR piece um, but actually the, the, the base game for people who liked Pokemon Go is, is actually really good. The, the way they've got level up, the way you collect uh, weapons, the way you customize your characters and you kind of form a team. And then the way the fact that it's got a social platform mm -hmm. and very shortly coming is the ability to actually battle other players directly. Um, right now, it's a rather indirect method, but that's that's gripped me more than anything like um obviously you introduced zing and a few other things that i'd played as well so yeah. there's too much good stuff from this week to, to to pick just one do you think um the walking dead has overtaken pokemon go in your eyes then i mean for me i don't find myself pulling pokemon go out anymore and i, I really like the kind of more recent changes in the last quarter but yeah. right now the so again social always wins uh social aspect i've met you know i've got a team of like five people in the area out of a team of about 12 we've got who are all kind of mm -hmm. hardcore at this game and like grinding it um together and building you know working towards team objectives for instance there's an objective you know with this particular hero go out and kill 150 zombies with this particular weapon so it's kind of like an achievement system and mm -hmm. there's a large grid that comes up and if you achieve those things as a team, then you all benefit from the result. And then you kind of tear up over time. So that and the fact that it gives you chat, just like old days of IRC, you can start talking to people, get to know who they are, where they are. And yeah. it's great. Like, as I said, even a friend of mine who was here in my location, who's now in Belgium, there's a thing in the game where you can pop a flare and people can teleport to your location and help support you on a, on a central objective. So very good. Check it out. Awesome. Nice. Well, there you go. That is The Walking Dead, our world free on iOS. Is it on Android as well? It is. Okay, cool. Very. So Rowdy can join in as well. Excellent. <laughs> so uh, talking about Rowdy, uh, let, let's fire it over to you and find out what you've been up to this week. You've been yeah. quite busy, but maybe not so much in VR, right? Exactly, exactly. I've, I've not been able to play any games. I've not been able to upload any videos, which is very strange for my channel because a lot of people expect me to output like a lot of content, but... This week has just been a little bit like too much of everything because I'm in a new room, but I've been doing, uh, well, not me myself, but I've hired a team to be doing some renovations here. We're doing, reno we're actually renovating the entire bathroom and uh, we're also splitting up the living room. So the room that I usually record in, which is uh, the living room, I usually like move all the tables aside so I can record there. But my girlfriend was kind of getting sick of that. And uh, she said like, why don't we like turn like the living room into two rooms? And then uh, we turn one one of them in, in, in an office and uh, do it do it that way. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm now sitting in my own virtual reality office. So uh, awesome. soon this place where I'm where I'm at now will be completely built for for my own stuff and then my own things. So uh, I won't have to be moving yeah. around anymore, which is going to be awesome. I really I'm really looking forward to that, and uh, hopefully that will be ready in like roughly like a week. So cool. then cool. I'll be back on so track. That so that room is where the magic is going to happen. 
Oh, of course. I, I got a lot of room, a lot of rooms here where magic happens. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Then. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this week, uh, I actually went back to uh, VR Zone Portal, which is at the Hollywood Bowl at the London O2. Uh, I went there last time to check out Mario Kart VR, and this time I went back and I met up with uh, Nathie's manager, David. And of course, we played Mario Kart VR. You know, that thing is a lot of fun. But also, whilst we were there, um, you know, David, probably watching this live now, is going to contest to all this that kind of stuff because it, it was kind of scary. But basically, they have this experience there, a VR experience called Hospital Terror Escape. And the thing is, like, when I went there previously, no one was, it wasn't even turned on. And when we went the second time, it wasn't even turned on. But I was asking the guy about it. He was like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll just turn it on for you guys. You can check it out. I was like, yeah, cool. Hmm. So the experience is for, like, two to four players. And basically, you sit in a seat with a sort of controller, uh, like, joystick that just goes forward and back in your left hand. And then a Vive controller in your right hand. And basically, the seat is represented in the virtual world as a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And the controller in your left hand just moves you forward and backwards in the wheelchair in the, through the world. And then the, the right uh, hand, which is the Vive controller, controls the torch. So you can just shine the way because it's like really dark and dingy in there. And basically, it's described as a horror experience where you have to survive. And the thing is, if one of you dies, then you all die. Mm -hmm. And you have 12 minutes to escape. Like 12 minutes is a, a decent amount of time, I thought. Um, but it was only the two of us. So we jumped in. We saw each other in our little wheelchairs. We were like, hey, what's up? And then we kind of went on a little adventure together and kind of got separated. And the thing was, like, this game like has jump scares in it like crazy, like real good jump scares as well. So David would, like, scream his lungs out. And I wouldn't even know what's going on because I'm on a different track to him, which would then build up the tension for me. And then all of a sudden something would jump out at me and make me scream. <laughs> David doesn't know what I'm experiencing. And then we kind of met up after this, like, torturous 10 minutes in a room where I was locked in a room and there was like other people on wheel in wheelchairs with like bags over their heads, all like wriggling around with these two like murderers in the middle, pulling out a different weapon out of a bucket each time, deciding which one they choose, like whether it's a saw, a chainsaw, a machete, whatever, and then just killing them one by one towards me. I was like losing my mind at this point because there's like a map behind them where I have to inform David where he needs to go to like navigate a maze in the dark to so he can pull a lever to save me. But uh, unfortunately, uh, David actually <laughs> killed me, so um, <laughs> we didn't actually make it. But but afterwards, we took the headsets off. We were just like, "I'm, you know what? I'm just so glad that is over <laughs> because it was terrifying and it was really <laughs> gruesome as well." Um, but you know, if you're into horror stuff and you've got a few friends that are into it as well, and you're in the London area, then I'd wholeheartedly recommend you go and check it out. It's yeah, kind people of asking, uh, how is it called? How what game is it? Okay, so it's called um, Hospital Terror Escape, and it's just, just, <laughs> yeah, that seems name. kind of a weird name, <laughs> but it's yeah. just in like arcade. So it's just yeah. in London and Shinjuku, uh, I believe at the moment, Tokyo, uh, the VR portal zone. Uh, but I'd, I'd imagine these, I, these like I never Mario Kart and to hear those three words like together Hospital, <laughs> yeah. Terror, Arcade. Terror, escape. <laughs> yeah, that, escape. Is that, that's, that's, there's got to be. There's got to be a like warning thing that's like you don't let pregnant people, you don't let people with heart attacks. Like, what yeah. were the requirements? Like, how old you do have you have to be to, be to go? You on have this? to be over sixteen to try it. And the attendant was 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 laughing and joking about like people going through it. He said that like lots of hen parties and like girls like to go through it to like push themselves to the limit. And he was saying that they were screaming so much that other people that were because there's a bowling alley right next door. They were saying, uh, "Excuse me, can you tell them to be quiet because <laughs> they're screaming too much?" And he's like, <laughs> "Like, dude, like, there's nothing I can do about this. They're they're in it, you know." Um, but yeah, yeah that, it, it was kind of cool. Game where you want someone tapping on your shoulder saying you need to be oh, quiet. No, 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 no. It was, it was, uh -oh. it was legit scary and gruesome, like really gruesome as well. So if you like horror stuff, then you might like it. But for me, I was like, well, this is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. but yeah, that was what I uh, did this week. Yeah. So, um, so nice. yeah, let's uh, move on then to some, some quick news. And first up is We Happy Few, uh, the PSVR experience. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, We Happy Few, it's a pancake game that launched yesterday. And it's an action-packed adventure game set in a drug-fueled retro-futuristic city in an alternative 1960s England. Now, you have to hide fight and conform your way out of this delusional joy obsessed world and joy is a drug so it's a drug that everyone inhabits this world takes it and if you oh. don't take it you're kind of like frowned upon basically like you're you're outcasted by society and basically when you don't take it you see the real world for what it is you know but like the the sort of screen behind the matrix type of thing 
But what they've done is they've made a VR experience uh, for PSVR called We Happy Few Uncle Jack Live VR. And uh, basically what it is, is a promotional tie-in and you have to help Uncle Jack, who is like a news broadcaster, uh, by feeding him news stories uh, to broadcast on the show. But you kind of have to feed him only happy stories because you want to keep everyone happy. But of course, because the the game's kind of got like a dark tone to it, things kind of get dark and a bit messed up and things start going a bit haywire. Um, but after the experience is over, then you can check out some archives and some music from the game. And uh, yeah, it's a free experience on PSVR, but it's a PSVR exclusive right now, so you can't check it out on any other platform. Um, but it's kind of just there just to promote the game. Like the game isn't going to get a VR mode or anything like that, unfortunately. It has a very interesting art style. Like, uh, I don't know, yes. it like feels like very like Bioshock-y kind of style, <laughs> like... Yeah, you're gonna trigger Nathy now because uh, you know Bioshock is his brand. You yeah. know, <laughs> I just, I just, I, I just uh, uh, figured out that I'm on drugs too because I, I'm, I'm like, like joyful all the time. So I think I'm, I'm like, oh, right? there you are. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, maybe you should send some over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. I have some pills left. You can eat. Like that's yeah. what they do in the game, right? They eat joy. Much. Yeah, that's it. The pills. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty nice. So if you're interested in um, uh, We Happy Few, it's uh, available now. It came out like, a, I think it was yesterday. Uh, and it's available on Steam, Xbox One and PS4. You can check that out now. But it's just like a demo, um, right? Yeah, the PSVR thing is just a demo, just a, a game tie in just to get you excited about the game. But like I say, it's exclusive to PSVR, so it's a shame it's not on every platform, considering it, the game is on every other platform. But it is what it is. So I just thought I'd share that one if you're interested in checking that one out. Uh, the mm -hmm. next bit of news is kind of an interesting one because uh, it's a new game. And, uh, you know, we, we need new games right now, I think. Uh, this is a new one by uh, Vertigo Games, the devs that brought you Arizona Shun Sunshine. Uh, they've teamed up with uh, Inner Space, the devs that brought you a game called La Perry, which is kind of like an artistic ballet in VR. It's very sort of artistic, very cool. Um, and they've made a, a game sort of in collaboration called Fisherman's Tale. Now, the trailer doesn't really sort of reveal much about the gameplay, but uh, it shows a fisherman in a lighthouse with a model lighthouse with their model lighthouse in that lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Lighthouse Inception. Basically, it's a model within a model within a world within a world. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get some more information about this game, and the Steam page provides some insight into what the game is all about. Oh. Uh, they describe it as a mind-bending VR puzzle adventure game in which being turned upside down and inside out is not merely a play on words. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of like really like puzzle games in VR. You know, I just recently started playing Static again on on oh. PSVR. So uh, that game is so good. Um, I noticed something it's such a great about Static. Like that, we have to just spend like two seconds here to promote Static. If you haven't, you, you, like Static, like the Russians would write it, right? S T A T I K. Exactly. And it's it's so good. I'm not going to tell you much about this game, particularly because Mike hasn't beaten the end of it, and of course I wouldn't spoil it for all of you wonderful folks. But like the box hands locked together and it's a thing that you've like once you're in that and sometimes you get this out of body feeling like with vr like resident evil 7 when somebody stabs a knife in you you kind of have this weird like feeling and when i was playing during the week uh the grand canyon experience i was in a canoe basically and there was water falling and you know that bit if you're on like a ride at a theme park and water's you coming flinch. down and then yeah, you get that feeling like, oh, God, and then it's going to pass over you. Like, you get that in VR so many times, and that's one of them, where it's like my hands being locked in this box, like, feels, it makes you feel constricted. Great puzzle exactly, game. Exactly, exactly. And puzzle, puzzle games work so well in VR. Like, I don't know if you guys have checked out Form as well. Like, that is a fantastic puzzle game in VR. Um, so I'm kind of intrigued by this one. Um, they're going to be showing it at Gamescom. Um, so Nathy and I are going to be there. So hopefully we'll get yeah. to check it out. We can tell yeah. you what it's all about. I will, I will definitely check it out. We have. I, I noticed, by the way, in the in the last lighthouse uh, on the table, I don't think there's another lighthouse there. Ooh. So how many? So it's only like three layers deep, maybe. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> Got to like stop somewhere, right? Maybe? I, I don't know. Yeah. But maybe that's something about the game. I don't, I'm not, I don't know yeah. for sure, because I tried zooming in, but I didn't really see it. it, it it's bending my mind already. Sorry, but I think... Chad, I was going to say, Static, apparently there is a mode in multiplayer with a mobile device. It sounds like an asynchronous mode was added to the, the devs af, by the devs after I played it. That's coming wow. in from Eric Hartley. 
That would be interesting because, um, yeah, I've only just started replaying it again. So I'll definitely check that out. Now that I've got the PSVR yeah. set up in a separate room now, I can. it's more accessible to me. So uh, I definitely want to check out more of that one. Just to put but some talk- context on that, um, Eric said there are some really cool remix challenges and a second player has to help you from outside VR. Interesting. Yeah, Very interesting, really- Eric. Yeah, thanks for sharing that one, dude. Definitely I'll look into that. Um, but with the fisherman's tail, apparently, like the whole premise is that there's a storm coming. Uh, you have to put the lighthouse on, and then that's kind of where the puzzling begins, basically. So I'm very curious because Vertigo Games is very good at making like like decent gameplay mechanics, and the the developers who made uh, La Paris are like like very good uh, uh, story writers because if mm. you played both of the the episodes of La Paris. It's top notch. So I'm I'm very curious how they also tell the story. Yeah. 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 And it's gonna be on HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, Windows Mixed Reality, and PSVR. So it's it's targeting oh. all the platforms, which is awesome. Um so another thing that is awesome is Doom Eternal. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if oh, you yeah. guys check this one out, but of yesterday, course. all my days. Bethesda dropped the bombshell at QuakeCon and mm-hmm. showed gameplay of their new game, uh, Doom Eternal. Now, this was originally teased back at E3. However, we didn't really get to see any gameplay back then, but they dropped like a 25-minute video, I think, showing tons of gameplay um, and talking about the game as well. And it, as you probably know, you know, Bethesda released Doom VFR last year. So it'll be interesting to see if this new D- Doom gets some VR love you know, just to see if they, they do a sort of a VR edition, a VR game, a VR mode, maybe. But the thing is, from what I saw from the gameplay, a lot of the core game mechanics have changed. You know, like uh, the the shotgun now has like a kind of um, a grappling hook underneath it now. So you can actually grapple, grappling hook enemies and fly towards them, which I think, I don't know if that would work too well in VR because it might be a bit too intense maybe for some people people like us maybe they were like yeah like bring it on but i think maybe for newcomers might be a bit too much um and it looks it looks even faster like it looks even faster than the original doom remake and it's using a whole new engine so it's kind of like the doom remake cranked to 11 like a new engine doesn't really need a new engine like the 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 doom it's already look freaking epic (laughs) and now they have this like but now uh, you'll notice, like when when they shoot enemies and stuff, like actually parts of their their uh, models come off, you know. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got this damage model mechanic so going on as well. It no, looks I, just. Oh, I I was I caught the live stream, and um, I'll just say two things about it. First, red access card, and second, I'll say um, if you don't know who Mick Gordon is, who is the the gentleman who is he used to be a DJ, and then they brought him on for the Doom OST when they brought Doom back. Um, that soundtrack is probably one of the best game soundtracks out there, along with like mm. Hotline Miami and a few others. Um, but him bringing new music in with this is one of the top things for me. And they did tease some of that through the trailers and that. So really, really looking forward to some some new audio. Uh, but the fact that it's, you know, they're not afraid of new platforms. Um, mm. And they said that because if you, if you check like people's posts about Doom, what's the thing? People are going, oh my God, day one, it's going to be on Switch. You know, I can play this on the bus yeah. on my way to school. Like that's the kind of impression. People are really hyped about that. But the, the cool thing about the name, uh, Doom Eternal, is that it's just an inverse of Eternal Doom, which, which came out mega years ago when Doom was first out. It was like 32 wads. Wads were Doom level files. God, I'm showing my age now. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, us Doom and Quakers uh, always want more. But the thing is that we didn't get any word on VR support from Bethesda. They didn't no. even mention it. So it looks like we'll have to wait. But then to put it into perspective, you know, when the original Doom remake released, it was back in May 2016. And we didn't get Doom VFR until December 2017. So like a good 18 months later. Yeah, um, I, I really hope they will. And then they, they also try some new stuff because I still think that that Doom VFR was like a little bit toned down they could have played around with more settings you know in the menu you know um i was kind of okay ish it could have been way faster with just the smooth logo and they added that later i think um but it it, you know so i hope they go for a little bit more where you can jump you know and you can you know launch yourself into the air stuff like that the thing that bothers me most was i think like could you actually like pick things up or was it just like pressing a button i think it was just pressing a button right specifically yeah, uh, you could like specifically grab things that yeah, were like kind of like interactive like, no, things but there's no vr grab yeah yeah no vr grab 
Oh, uh, like and, and the thing shame. is as well like it, it it was the community that modded that game that, that added yeah. the smooth locomotion at first yeah. it wasn't bethesda no. um so you know we'll maybe have to see maybe have to wait an, a year or two after the official release and i think doom eternal is scheduled for release december this year so maybe it'll be 2019 2020 until maybe we get a vr version but i wouldn't expect one straight out of the bat that's for sure yeah. um but would you uh, you'd be interested in another doom game right like you, you enjoyed the first I'm begging one for it. i'm begging for it because i think they they already demonstrated in the first one how much, I mean, being an early VR project, I mean, they were pumping so much out at the time, right? I mean, Bethesda mm. had uh, three different major AAA titles landing. Mm. Uh, yep. Maybe it was the weakest of the lot, but they've learned lessons, you know? So I, mm. I want to see more Doom, absolutely. It was great to be in, and um, I know people kind of are surprised by this, but having had the options of, I played it on PSVR, uh, the aim controller or, you know, the move controllers or gamepad, I found the other two actually weren't great, and I found the gamepad was great because it kind of it, it, it threw away all the difficulties of controller mapping in what is a relatively simple game, and just left mm-hmm. you kind of just pounding through. It's such a, you know, they they they, they have this great coined term of rip and tear, which is one of the music soundtracks, and people are always mm-hmm. citing that, but it, it just feels so visceral. Yeah, like, pe- people are asking in the chat how it's uh, how it's performing on the Rift nowadays. Does anyone know? Uh... Do they have performance problems. Yeah, it did. It had real performance problems. Uh, I haven't played it yet on the Rift, you know, since it really first came out. I remember completing the game and then never really went back to it. So I wouldn't really know. But they do, you know, Bethesda, to their credit, are good at patching games and, and, and always oh, updating to. games. So I would yeah. I would imagine I would imagine it runs better now. But yeah, I really don't know. But it's interesting you mentioned that you tried the PS Aim controller. Like, what was that like? Broken. I couldn't even really? get past the tutorial. Like, oh, the, okay. it was it was broken. I mean, it was it was very cool to have like a shotgun or whatever and be able to pick it up and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But it, it as I said, I, I I and even now recently, it was about a month ago or something when I was setting my PSVR up downstairs. Same deal. Still can't get past the tutorial. You cannot teleport mm. in one section because of. A mismapping on the controller. I, I should report it to be honest. But the it's a real um, shame. The move controllers were okay as well. Mm-hmm. But the issue is, like in a fast-paced game like that, if you don't have really like a connection between the player and the controller, it's very difficult to do snap turns, especially with the with the limitations on that camera, because you can't mm-hmm. 180 on yeah. the PSVR camera. You'll lose your tracking. That was the main issue. So I I actually should go back and play it on PC VR now. Yeah, the, definitely. The, for the sure. thing is, when I'm in VR, I most often don't use those kind of snap turning or those kind of things on PSVR. You kind of have to because you don't have any anything back. But with, with any other like, con- even if I play on the Rift, and I only have two senses. I rarely use like the snap turning because I just find it it like breaks the immersion a bit for me. You use your body, right? You just turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah of course. I take it that's going to be in your setup, right? You're going to have like what two or three senses, or maybe four. For me, Rowdy. Uh, yep. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I mean, I currently have two sensors, uh, but I might be getting like another one just to, to get like the full tracking now. Oh, yeah, I totally recommend a third. Yeah. I think four, four is overkill, but three is the sweet spot for sure. Mm. Definitely. So just good. need to be able to mount them. <laughs> yeah, just get a drill. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's, just, that's, a, that's just a really good question to ask because people say it all the time. They're always like, Vive, because of the tracking. But a riff with three sensors, I have no discernible difference between that and the vibe i couldn't tell you i've never felt a difference what about you no no same um you know like now i've got both um yeah it, it feels just as good with both really three senses is definitely a sweet spot i used to have four um but i just found that that fourth one is just uh, taking up another an extra yeah, usb so, so i wouldn't recommend I, it. I still think yeah. that vibe tracking is better but not in a way that you can really feel it. I mean, they still use lasers. You have millimeter accuracy. I do. I do think that like the tracking is more accurate, but not up to a level that you can actually like really, really tell. I don't think so. So if you wanna if you wanna test it, you just play baseball with controllers and then see if someone can catch them uh, in time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you test like uh, who's the best uh, best one out there. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, just juggle with them, you know, and see uh, yeah. if it works or not. That, that's an esport I want to see now on the floor at like uh, five. Yeah. You know, yeah. someone's yeah. just all right. I'm gonna chuck something really fast at you. If you don't catch it, you get hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's move on then to uh, next bit. Ne- next bit of news, and that is uh, Star VR uh, are teasing a new headset. So 
on their website right now, if uh, if you've not checked it out, uh, Star VR, um, they've got a silhouette of a headset on there, and it says, uh, we made something for you, and a date, which is the 14th of uh, August, 2018. And also, they just said, at SIGGRAPH. So SIGGRAPH mm. is an event held in Vancouver between the 12th and the 16th of August, where they host the latest innovations in sort of uh, CGI, animation, VR games, mixed reality, and emerging technologies. So that's obviously where they're going to unveil their new headset. So once we get the more information about it, we'll probably share more about it maybe next week. Uh, yeah. But if you're not familiar with Star VR, it's actually sort of a collaboration now between Starbreeze and Acer. Uh, Acer actually bought a large chunk of uh, the stu- their sort of a studio mm. and uh, star vr's original headset was uh, a bit of a beast to be honest uh, but no one's really ever used one <laughs> i've never used one i don't know about you guys have you ever used a star vr headset nope no i don't um, think star vr actually an arcade ever showed in the That's uk why. Yeah, exactly. It's it's an arcade uh, headset, and uh, it's, it's it's beefy specs. Like we're talking, uh, it's uh, this is the resolution. So it's five one twenty by fourteen forty. So that equates to two five sixty by fourteen forty per eye. So to put that into sort of perspective, that's like having a, an Oculus Go resolution per eye. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it it's pretty damn sweet, and that's a two hundred and ten degrees field of view as well and 130 degree field of view vertical so that's huge like field of view and how many um, graphic so cars that don't exist do you need for that one to run <laughs> who knows and how many more sweet sweet lies are you going to be telling me mike i can't have this headset can i no no exactly you no one will be able to run this thing um but to put it in perspective like as well like the pimax 8k uh is, is less as well so you know this thing is a, a beast what yeah yeah what? but of course pimax 8k is kind of like Looking at the consumer market, this Star VR headset is, like you said, more of an arcade headset. But maybe uh, you know this new headset that they're teasing is going to be a consumer like headset. It. Who knows? Who it knows? Sounds like it, like the th- thing you just said, like what they have on, the, on like, like as a teaser. Sounds yeah. like something for us, everyone out there. Um, mm. But Starbreeze also made a John Wick, right? They, uh, I think yep. that was also like an arcade experience for the Star VR in the end. I think it was like a special demo or game yes. for their headset did, did anyone play yeah, that was. one uh no i know eric hartley did uh who commented earlier on um so if he's still in the chat i'd love to know his thoughts I played um, him. oh wick okay one. you did yeah the john wick yeah. one yeah not impressed yeah. the, the, was the it coolest like, part like, was uh, the uh, beginning where you and where it was like a good good looking wave shooter yeah, but go on the, with the point is actually interesting because <laughs> um, yeah. you go to like the receptionist and you can play with like the bell and like he gets like annoyed by you and he takes it away and I was like, oh, <laughs> that is actually well done. Like you know, you could poke like your finger in in his ear and stuff like you know, could do stupid stuff like that. But after that, <laughs> it went downhill. So if you like ringing bells, best game ever. <laughs> best if game you like ever. shooting dudes, bell, maybe bell not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I know that, uh, that David tried it uh, in mm. uh, Dubai in a VR arcade. And the only thing he told me was that the thing that he didn't like was the fact that it's so, like like the same for the Pimax, it's so large that it just wiggles around a bit, you know? It's never like really... Um, but he played like a zombie game where he was sitting in a chopper and he had to shoot zombies uh, from, from, from the skies. And even like on the ground, they started jumping at him and it was kind of scary, blah, blah. Um, but overall, like you said, the field of view was nice. That's for sure. Mm. But the tracking was kind of off and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. Um, it's maybe really cool for like movie experiences or like some kind of like, uh, I don't know, like experiences where you have like that 360, but it, which is like a little bit like calmer, that kind of stuff. To really get Maybe Zim might want to check this out for I, some of his Yeah, I was projects. gonna say cockpit sims, uh racers, flying yeah. an Apache, that kind of stuff I think yeah. would be good. Anything Absolutely. where you that's don't have exactly, to worry that's about exactly what I meant. Wobble, yeah. wobble, 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 wobble. <laughs> yeah. You know what no that's doom. all about now, no Mike. Doom VFR. Right? Yeah. yeah. So what no so doom? Can... Oh god, no. You'd end up with the thing backwards on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, like you say, I think they're mainly found in arcades and IMAX theaters as well. They've been showing them in IMAX theaters as well to promote movies. Uh, but yeah, like we we'll say, we'll, we'll look into the details. Hopefully, we'll we'll get oh, more I information. Hope, I hope it's going to be a consumer headset. I really, I really hope so. It's going to be interesting. The more competition in the market, the better. I think, in my mind. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Of course. Oh, and also make some great content. 
of course. <laughs> With yes, that. Content, content, <laughs> Please. content is king. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some uh, game that's releasing next week. Uh, like I've said before, I kind of want this to kind of be an ongoing feature where we talk about games that are releasing in the following week so you kind of know what's coming up because there isn't really anywhere online that aggregates all these kind of games being releasing. So we kind of want to be that informative uh, sort of voice for you uh, guys and girls. But the one that's interesting that's coming out next week is Titanic VR. Uh, now, this game is finally coming out of early access it's been out in early access for some time hmm. uh, and the full release shares two different types of educational vr experience that brings history to life so the first element is gameplay you've got a sort of eight dive missions and seven lab missions this is kind of where the educational part of the game comes into play and players are tasked with navigating the wreck in a submersible and uh, you can also now dive to the stern area of the ship, which is kind of like the least explored area of the ship in real life as well. Um, so if you're like a real Titanic enthusiast and you know all about it, then you'll be quite excited about this one because the stern is really sort of an unexplored area because I think it's quite dangerous to get, actually get there in real life. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And then you've got the lifeboat experience, which is uh, an immersive and historically uh, respectful animated experience that tells the story of the evacuation of the Titanic on the lifeboats based on eyewitness testimonies and survivors as the tragedy unfolded. And you follow the journey of a uh, fictional uh, Matthews family as women and children are the first aboard the initial lifeboats. So that can be kind of interesting as well. I imagine it's going to be quite emotional yeah. and quite intense, but very, uh, you know, interesting in terms of uh, experience, especially because it's like it's educational. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's... You know, you're never going to forget something like that if you've experienced it. Just imagine that uh, back uh, back in school, you got to learn history through this kind of medium. It would be it would be epic, that's though. Know. Like, and not that would have done way I... better. Not only history, but also like things like biology, like exploring the human body or like something like that, uh, doing it actually in virtual reality. They, they, they should go for awesome. that that magic magic school bus concept where you can like sit in a submarine together with your teacher exploring the Titanic. That's it. Yeah, but can let's we say if we was in the teacher, can we just like? <laughs> but the problem is, like, if, if I was in that school bus with you, jackasses, then I still probably wouldn't learn anything because you would <laughs> no. be messing around. No, the, the, the just, funny thing is, listen, and you know, the, the funny thing is, we just asked uh, in the chat, like, would you like to be a passenger on the Titanic in VR? And then we took answered, no, it sank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, How spoiler. Do you know? Good right. point. <laughs> Yeah, good point. So, uh, Zim, you, you check this one out because you actually visited the studio that that made this, right? How do you read my mind, Mike? You, you're just the best host in the world, aren't you? <laughs> mind melt. Yeah. He's like he's like he's like Professor uh, Xavier or whatever, you know, sitting there like the X Men. I just need to get that <laughs> <laughs> in his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's a good impression. Make a gif of that. I, I, I will pay you. Um, yeah, I, I checked it out. Uh, so I was, you know, having met the studio, first I was impressed that they had like 40 people. And then they're like, ah, I can show you this preview of this thing. But what I would take away from it, having played their earlier kind of half of the game, if you want to call it that, um, the diving one was not what I expected it to be. It was really interesting um, being this little divey robot. And then this new piece is like Titanic, the movie, turned into a VR educational experience, as you say. So, um, you know, gamers probably aren't going to flock to this thing. But for those of us who have been kind of eating VR for some time, um, mm -hmm. I think you'll all agree that there are some things that, you know, from uh, from that perspective, educational experience um, are almost, you know, as good as sometimes better than the game experiences. They're, they're, they're very rich and they're things that you maybe can't do somewhere else. Um, mm. the example this, uh, this week, I, you know, I played something that where I was, you know, uh, deeping, diving into the, uh, into the womb and looking at my own unborn self, you know, so <laughs> that I would not have done before when I was playing Tetris and Donkey Kong. <laughs> and what experience was that? Yeah. So there's a, um, there's a game. Oh, I wish I remembered the name of it. Um, it's called wonderful. You it's available oh. on Rift and Vive and you get yeah. to see, like the process of when you're uh, they actually show like a sea of sperm going by and then there's an egg and you know they show the little baby growing and then and then you have like a whole walkthrough of how all the senses develop but it's done really well and they don't just kind of like copy cutter you know copy cut paste posse kappa they they actually do each of the senses very well and there's some visual effects that they do in each of the modules that uh, you know i had to applause them for when i thought i was going to be like oh this is just for a bit of entertainment wait, but wait, wait. so this is about good. you so we can see how you got born me specifically okay <laughs> that's interesting right? wow 
Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Yeah. yeah. But the, going back to um, the Titanic VR devs, like because they've made a World War II bomber one as well, right? That was so good. I think that didn't that release. No. And so I, I think it's only no. been shown at the um, one of the natural history museums or something like that. Oh, or something yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, just... but I'm really hoping that they allow it to be downloaded for home users as well because it sounded really that is cool. The plan. Yeah, yeah you, you might point. want to just like just tell us about that again because that was a really cool uh, sounding experience. Yeah, um, I, the thing I would say about it is um, the thing that I, I I loved about it was they constructed for the BBC, who I think was their their client in this in this case, right? They constructed this thing where you're in like an old school World War II bomber taking off from England, and although you don't ride the entire way, um, they have actual audio from one of the bombers, right, from the different crew members or whatever, recorded from like nineteen. 19- 40 or whenever this was. And and so it's all like original audio done up with VR graphics. And you can see like the person with the map doing the bombing and you're in the cockpit and you can kind of go to different stations, even down to the gunner. You're flying over Germany. You see the kind of lit up, um, the gunfire kind of streaming up through the darkness. I mean, that that was really nice. nice. But the, the, the best part about it for me personally, after you get through this kind of 15 minute kind of, you know, snapshot, snapshot, snapshot experience where you're kind of doing these little segments, at the end of it, in the last kind of like four minutes, um, the lead guy, like he's, he's, he's flying home to England, obviously, and he just bursts out in song. And it's so like you're listening to a human who's just come back and didn't die and is going to return to his family. And you hear it in his voice and the way they did the lighting and the way they did the kind of camaraderie in the cabin. It just feels so like, wow, I'm here. Yeah. And so that was really impressive. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I really hope they release that. I really hope. And if they do, so. obviously, we'll let you guys and girls know. Uh, but if you're interested in checking out Titanic VR, it releases on Thursday, the 16th of August. So next week, it's going to be available on Oculus and Steam VR. On Oculus, it's 10.99 in British pounds, 14.99 in US dollars. Steam VR, it's 11.39 in British pounds. I don't know why. It's like a little bit more, but uh, 14.99 in US dollars as well. So you can check yes. it out. So uh, let's swing on to our main topic, and that is Magic Leap. So this week, Magic Leap released their first ever headset, the Magic Leap 1 Creator Edition. And for those that don't know about Magic Leap, it's an augmented reality device similar to that of the Microsoft HoloLens. However, it's looking to push the industry forward with its light field technology, which merges the analog world with the digital world, uh, which is what they're referring to as like spatial computing. That's what they quite kind of want to terminology termin- <laughs> use the terminology as spatial computing so you can just interact with things in your home environment but it's all there virtually and digitally so the company and the headset has kind of been surrounded in mystery over the years you know we've had snippets of demos here and there things have been shown but um that didn't stop any huge investments in the company you know they've had uh, over two billion dollars in funding and they've got ceos from google Alibaba, Qualcomm on the board of directors. So it's got some huge name backers behind this and they had tons of money and now they've got a really big team developing this headset. And it finally released this week. So you could actually just go out and buy one. Now, the price for this kit is $2,295. Now, the other thing about this headset as well is not only is it kind of expensive, but you can only buy one if you live in the US right now. And the reason for that is because they actually hand deliver this thing to your door and they actually come into your house and set it up with you and go through a personal setup procedure. So that's kind of interesting. Like you can't actually just import one, unfortunately. So what do you guys think about that? That's wildly intimate. Is there any other thing that you guys can remember where someone comes to your house and helps you install it? I know a few things, but they're not technology. It it reminds Mm. me of that guy that knocks on your door in Fallout 4. (laughs) Like a salesman? (laughs) I'm having reflections yes. of the cable yes, and guy. He's setting up the magic leap for you. That that's the like yeah. the the picture I have in my mind now. I don't know why. Although I have to say, yeah. like in Belgium and in Holland, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it's the same. Like you know, when they come and install the internet, it's always like a guy who comes in with like a box, and then you need to like yes. yeah, get the the router from him, and it's like uh, oh yeah, you can you can pay extra if you want him to install it, uh, but they always come in and put the box down because you're not allowed it's, to like just put the box down. And do you make him a cup of tea, Rowdy? Like. Is this a is this a cultural thing? I'm too curious. You know, do, are you culturally required to make the dude a cup of tea? Uh, no, but I, I do. Like for example, like with the builders that I have right now, 
I do do that, you know, like uh, they come in and they spend an entire day here. So uh, I do get them like some, some, some breakfast and like some, some cookies or like, you know, some stuff like that. Oh, man. Free but not, demos. Not, I'm not going to like the guy who comes in to store my internet is like inside for like five minutes, puts the box down and plucks in the cable. It's like, would you like a cup of tea? Nah, I'm not, I, I don't do that. Okay. Now, well, Rowdy is just feeding his workers because in the end, when everything is finished, he just wants to do that. Like move that bus together with them, you know, move yeah. that bus, move yeah. that bus. <laughs> and don't forget, I hate people. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. That's true. If you're not, if you're new to the show, you'll find this out over time. Um, but it's kind of funny. Like you said, like the guy brings the box, like with the internet and it. it reminds me of that episode of the IT crowd. I don't know if you guys watched that where it's like, where Jen, the manager, is told that the internet is contained in a box and she then believes it. It's freaking hilarious. And then, like, everything breaks down and, uh, you know, they, they start, yeah. like, an orgy and they start, like, you know... Yeah, I remember that episode. That was a fun one. <laughs> so we're digressing a little bit. But in this box, with the Magic Leap box, you get the headset itself, which is called Lightwear. You get a computer puck, which attaches to your belt, uh, and that is called the Light Pack. And then you get a Six Degrees of Freedom controller as well. Now, the headset itself actually comes in two sizes, so you can get like a small one and a sort of medium one, and has swappable nose pieces and forehead pads to kind of make sure you get like a really good fit and it's like comfortable to wear. And check this out, right? So if you haven't sunk enough money as it is, for an additional £495, uh, $95, sorry, $495, you can add a professional developer package, which adds a hub that you can use so you can connect it to your PC to transfer data and charge it at the same time. <laughs> so what's the total package price? My God, how much money do we have to give these people? Yeah, so you, you're getting like nearer to three grand, you know, US dollars to, to have no, a, a full so you, need to, you need to pay for transferring stuff to your lead. I, I don't computer. think so. I don't think so. But if you want to charge it and transfer and have this like hub, like developer hub thing, then you do, yeah. It's like a laptop dock. Right. Yeah, kind of. I think that's what it's like. Yeah, I haven't actually the, seen a picture of it, so I don't know. But, but the, to be fair, it's not described. aimed really at, at consumers, right? This is still like a like a uh, DK one or like a developer product, right? It's not it's not aimed at <laughs> yeah. consumers. Uh, oh, watch yourself there, Rowdy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. This isn't for consumers, you know. You could buy one, of course, but I wouldn't recommend you do because it doesn't really have anything that you can check it out. It's got a few applications that they've made themselves, but really the big breakthroughs and the interesting stuff is going to come from developers making their own games and stuff for it. Well, you can uh, wear it for, for fashion reasons as well. You could look like a, you know, cool steampunk Willy Wonka. person. Yeah, Willy Wonka. Steampunk yeah. Willy did, Wonka. They, yeah. did they already release like a price that they aim for for the consumers? Because I thought it would no, be cheaper so for like no so the, the consumer to be honest will... it's really cheap already i mean if you compare it to the hololens this is cheap this is very cheap yeah. Yeah. It's from a, a developer account. standpoint it is okay uh but but this isn't like i say this isn't consumer version like the confusion consumer version will be cheaper because we probably won't see a consumer version for another year and a half two years maybe um but the thing is kind of interesting like you know it packs an nvidia processor an nvidia gpu eight gigabytes of ram 128 gigabytes of storage a built-in rechargeable battery that lasts like three hours eye tracking spatial audio hand tracking it has tons of stuff in it, like an array of cameras and sensors. But, but I, I wonder what, cool. what of that, what of all of that is actually like really like new technology, like because a lot of those things already mm. exist. No software. Where where, where is software. the magic leap? Like you know the. Okay, so like the technology is very similar to HoloLens. Like, let's be clear about it. But it does make some advancements. Uh, the field of view is a fraction bit wider. Um, also, like uh, similar to the HoloLens, though, it does scan your environment uh, around you, so you can place uh, persistent three D objects in your real life space. Mm. So, like, say for example, you want to put a penguin on your coffee table. If you walk out the room, you come back again. The penguin will still be exactly where you left it. Like it, it, it knows it, it maps it in real time from your, your actual that, space. Right. It, it does. It does. It does. Um, but in terms of like it, it's difference, I don't know. Like I think the fact it's got way more sensors. You know, it's got like a controller as well, which is kind of different. Yeah. Um, the, plus, the, the, the reason why I'm watching is is uh, is because I saw this tweet from uh, from I think it was from Road to VR from Ben, and he said basically. Uh, like the company itself hyped hyped it up a lot by just calling the company Magic Leap. You know, Magic Leap is like it's it's going to be such a leap forward that you're going to think that it's yeah. magic. 
And I, I don't yeah. see that yet with this device. I don't see that that huge leap forward where I think of like, oh wow, this is this is amazing. If you look at the, the early trailers that they released for the the, the concept art, uh, so to speak, mm, uh, it's yeah. nothing like that. I I think it's more about the roadmap and the vision they have for the near future. As a developer, you can now choose: Do I want to work with Microsoft in for for the future or with Magic Leap? You can now choose. The, the Magic Leap is, is cheaper than the HoloLens right now. So you have different like like tools to work with. And maybe Magic Leap says to developers, listen, in two, three years, we have a final product out there or even longer. Well, Microsoft have diff has different ideas of what they want to do with their HoloLens, you know? So yeah. I think it's more about as a developer, who do I want to stick with right now? And what is their vision? Uh, what are the like investors doing? Stuff like that. So I think it's more about right now, the tool is there. This is pretty much what they can do. For, mm. for like technology wise, this is the like pretty much mm. the, the limit they can reach and also for a price that is still uh, fairly cheap. Of course they mm. will you know make a new one, it gets better, it gets more improved. But I think this is the best you can get at this moment. I know I one thing for sure. This is the start of the AR wars. <laughs> yes. uh, nice, well, nicely is. done. Yeah. Yeah. Nice from, plug. From <laughs> From reports of people that have tried it, like such as The Verge and seen it, you know, I watched a lot of their reviews and their hands on time with it. They they all kind of shared some similar sort of critiques of the headset. And that was the the field of view uh, because it's uh, 50 degrees only. So to kind of put it into perspective, you know, like, um, you know, the Rift and the Vive have a 110 uh, field of view. You know, the Pimax has 210 something like field of view. So 50, 50 uh, degrees field of view is kind of limited. And then what they were saying was that when you see the real world around you and this kind of small limited field of view with kind of 3D objects just popping in and out of that 3D sort of small window, it's kind of uh, breaks the immersion. It's kind of a bit off-putting. I, I would say stingingly disappointing for anyone who hasn't tried uh, the HoloLens or something equivalent. I mean, the restriction is is mega at the moment but when they finally figure this out technically mm. and get there oh, yeah. what they can do with that like with objects popping out of walls and you're in your actual space i can't wait to play a game like that and especially like horror games they're gonna kill you yeah the thing <laughs> that put I, I me off the problem. most with the uh, with trying because i tried a hololens as well is this just the size of the screen it's so small like it's this mm. this really like tiny little thing Ah, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm used to like VR and like, I know that the Vive has like, uh, what is it like 90, 90 or uh, uh, 110? What is it now again? I think it was like, I think it's something between that. I can't remember, between like 90 that. and 110 like, are the two figures in my mind. You know, the view of like, you know, everywhere you watch, except for on the borders to see stuff, but there it's like that small little yeah, square. Like, like yeah. in the end, like you can't compare VR with AR. The DK1 wasn't great either. Like try the DK1 now and yeah. then try your CV1. It's the same mm. story, you know? Mm. So I think that from a consumer perspective, this is maybe not that exciting, but if you are a developer and you can, instead of uh, use your phone all the time to see your AR stuff, wear something. And mm -hmm. if you take a step back and you see your entire object in your room, it works great. You know, you kind of need to to see the future of it and not uh, say like, okay, this is this should be, if this is in the store, it would fail, blah, 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 blah. It's not a consumer thing. No, it's a tool not. for developers to prepare themselves for the future. And if you are a dev right now that can buy a Leap Motion or like a, a Magic Leap, a Leap Motion, what the heck? <laughs> Sounds the same, by the way. Um, <laughs> but if you can buy something like that and, and already start developing something for it, that's great. And then you can yeah. kind of like, because if there's a new HoloLens coming out and you already have something for the first one, you can like transfer it. It's the same with the DK1 and the DK2. You know, you made a demo on Oculus Share, wasn't that great. I mean, it's kind of like like Pixel Ripped, you know, where mm. you had a demo, wasn't the best thing ever. And now it's like a, a fun game. So, you But kinda... that's the guilt trip that I am feeling right now. The thing is two grand, right? Literally two grand. And and all I can remember now, and Nathan and I both rode this train hard, right, DK1, DK2 days, the amount of devs who put stuff out that was quality like tasters that were actually great and mm. you actually got to try for free, well, except for the price in, of the waiting and the headset. But like, if that's going to land with Magic Leap, and I'm I'm guessing there are going to be devs putting some pretty cool stuff out, then, you know, that's a pretty stinging price of entry, but uh, might have to do it. It's one of those things. <laughs> I'd love you to do it. I'd love you to do it so you can tell us all about it. Yeah, but, but just I mean, like Rowdy says... 
it's, it's, oh yeah it's, it's awesome, totally bro. cool like yeah. and and despite like the, the critiques of the people that tried it like the virgin scene you know i, I respect those, those those outlets massively but you know like it's still super exciting you know like mm -hmm. i i get it you know like rowdy said it doesn't feel like a magic leap it just feels like a magic first first step right now that's mm -hmm. kind of where yeah. we're at and like like nathy said you know this is the starting block you know this is the first product uh, I you think know, like, this is like the first generation. Five, ten years, like you know, this technology is going to really like blow your mind away. Yeah, of course, of really course, of so. course. We'll, we'll be we'll be looking back on these like uh, you know goggles and just laughing one day and just thinking what crazy crazy people we were. Um, but yeah, I, I'm convinced that this is the kind of the, you know we're we're paving the way for the future in terms of VR and AR right now. I think it's very exciting. There's of course a lot of naysayers out there, but of course there always is with new technology. But I think you just got to you know. Maybe just try it out first, but I'm, I'm excited about it for sure. Like, do you remember a time when like sneakers or trainers, whatever you want to call them, were like mostly black and white and boring colors? And then all of a sudden, like, you know, after the millennium struck, like all of a sudden they're colorful. At least Magic Leap's form factor is different and interesting and steampunk. Mm -hmm. And I know Nathie's a big fan of it. Um, but like, I want to see that with headsets as well. I mean, I'm not saying I necessarily want a bright pink rift, but I know someone out there does. So uh, it's mm -hmm. good to see some of that. Yeah, that's why it's always actually... so much fun to play with the PlayStation VR, right? I mean, it's it's sexy in the way it lights up and stuff like that. The, the goggles actually made me think of the, uh, of the Riddick, uh, the Chronicles of Riddick. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. it. Course, yeah. Uh, that's, that's what it made me think of. It was pretty good awesome. Good shout, good shout. But just think one th one last thing I want to mention before we uh, move on to our next topic is that the one of the difficulties with this technology and VR has the same problem as well is that it's so difficult for us as well as content creators to portray how cool it actually is like we can try our best with videos and increasing fields of view and everything else but you're just watching a video of us playing a game like yeah. you really have to try this technology to really understand it and believe it and i think that's the problem they're going to have that the vr industry has right now is that you know when these headsets go into retail stores just don't put them behind like freaking glass cabinets have people there or have a way to to demo it you know a kiosk that just guides you through this procedures to show it off um, because really consumers just need to try it before they can really believe it. Yeah, yeah, correct. Well put. So there we have it. Let's uh, move on to our final topic now, and that is the Nintendo Switch VR. So, what? Yeah, exactly, it. exactly. So th this week we had some unexpected news uh, from an interesting guy called uh, Random666 underscore KYS on Twitter. Uh, he's a modder, a hacker, and he likes to write homebrews and modding tools for the Switch. It's difficult to tell whether this is like true or not, but the guy seems to be sort of a pretty legit member of the community. So, you know, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt on this one. But he's been messing around with the Switch and, and doing homebrew stuff and tweaking modding, all that kind of good stuff for a while. And what he found whilst he was digging around in the sort of system was that he found a VR test mode uh, within the Nintendo Switch itself. And uh, <laughs> Nathie's a believer. He's wearing his uh, Mario hat. Let's -a go! To show his support. <laughs> yeah. um, but this VR test mode that he's found in the Nintendo Switch menu, when you activate it, it splits the display just like it does if you put your phone into like uh, Google Card mode mode or whatever. You know, it splits the display into two for one, one for each eye. And then uh, it had some text that popped up. It was in French, but he translated it for us. And uh, it says, please move the console away from your face and click the close button. Um, you press the button and then it just closes because there is no content or anything you can actually play on this thing right now. Um, and there's no official word from a Nintendo either. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, I wonder what you guys think of this one. Um, I, I so want it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I want it to happen yeah. because the Switch as a device, it's, it's one of those devices where initially I was like, never going to work too big. You can't put it in your pocket. Who's going to carry this thing around? And then when we, when we kind of got word that it was a pretty decent console and picked one up and played with it, it's like, it's like my favorite console of the consoles that are out right now. I mean, it's such a portable device. It's really good quality. Yeah very low friction, very easy to throw it up on a 4K TV and it looks gorgeous. Whereas like back in the day, like the Wii, I always used to dislike the fact that it wasn't pixel perfect. And even with adapter cables, you really couldn't even get the standard def. It, it was just, it was just rough. But this is like, I hope Nintendo is actually doing it. And this guy isn't just pulling the wool over our eyes because mm -hmm. they like doing stuff. Um, but, but so far they've well, really said nothing about well, it. I don't it's, think... It's dead away. I don't think it's going to happen soon. First of all, this, this Nintendo Switch is way too underpowered 
to run VR. It doesn't even run it's like a four-party Mario no? Kart uh, game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's too 720p. slow. It's 720p. How will how will that ever? So it's 720p yeah. divided by two for two screens. Yeah. It's gonna be a pi- you're gonna you're gonna count the pixels. Yeah. You know. But uh, Nintendo yeah. is known. <laughs> Nintendo is known for for like a, a a fair price of you know you buy a handheld. It's cheap. You buy the games aren't that expensive. But if they want to make a headset that works with VR, and I don't think they want to go for a standalone one. They don't go for mobile. I really feel like they want to go for something that is positional tracked, something that can be played in the living room together with people, a party system where you can share the headset. I I think they, maybe it's because it's kind of complicated to do it because they have their own vision on that. And Nintendo is a different company than anyone else. So they, they might have an idea of how they want to do it and what they want to do and but I don't know. Like I don't. But they do lo-fi really well. I mean, like we saw that recently with, um, you know, with Nintendo Labo, and um, yeah, that was, they, uh, they can be creative. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they can. But it's like they're never. They have never been known for like you know really strong hardware. Hmm. That's absolutely true. But I mean, like they they did amazing things with the Wii, and that was built on like yeah. The, yes. the most rubbish like mini PC yes. <laughs> contents that you yes. could and they ran it for ages and it was a killer for them I mean they I really think they could do it I think they could do it with the switch just go for something lo-fi not too graphically intense um, people it would still be a foothold and a starter for people to mm. get into VR that's better than something like Google Cardboard yeah. so like like Rowdy mentioned the, the main issue here is is the resolution of display because like the switch screen is uh, 1280 by 720 pixels and runs at a maximum refresh rate of 60 frames per second. So to put it into perspective, Oculus Go runs at 2560 by 1440. So it's, mm. you know, and that boosts up to 72 frames per second. So like, it, I think, you know, you're going to have that screen. Yeah, like so... you're going to... You, you're going to have like that uh, screen door effect like in a huge way and everything's going to look kind of bad. But like you said, the kind of interesting thing would have been is like a Labo kit, like like a Google Cardboard Labo kit where you can slot it in and, yeah. and, and, and just check something out. Like this kind of basic, you know. If there's one company that can make something creative out of this, then it's Nintendo for sure. Yeah. Uh, if they can do yeah. something. And it's going to sell big time. Us all. What'd you say? Yeah. I, the thing. The difficulty, the, the, the difficulty that I think here is that the actual the base component without the controllers of the screen is is quite weighty. So if you're going to combine that with cardboard, um, you know how sturdy is that going to be on the head worn? And again, if it's close to your face, how are you going to do the facial interface? Oh, there. And is sweat going to get on the cardboard? Like I, I kind of feel like they they do a labo project, but with plastic bits. I don't not cardboard. If they do something VR. I don't think they are going to build something that is like completely standalone. It's going to be like they did with the Wii, you know, like a like a, a strong, you know, uh, a console that you can put somewhere in your living room somewhere. And then like the PlayStation did, you know, with the PSVR, just hook like a PSVR to that. So people can mm-hmm. still play Pancake and they can play VR. I don't think they go, they want to sell everyone on VR straight away. They still want to like, like kind of like sneak it in with their mm. like hardware they already usually like present to everyone. Mm. I think, I don't know. Yeah. I think but that would be the of, best option. In terms of in the hardware, they, you know, you probably could pull it off with the switch itself. Cause it's got like gyros and accelerometers. You probably could get a three doff headset yeah. experience anyway, <laughs> but I just think with the resolution probably I isn't think you're going to get a little motion sick, not only of the resolution, but also because the, it can't really power a VR game in the first place. It's too slow. Like I played, uh zelda on it sometimes like i was looking at 50 frames per second not 60. If you play mm. with three four people mario kart it has some issues like it can't handle that it's too much for it for that little device and then they say like yeah mm. you can play rocket league on it yeah i want to play rocket league on 60 fps it's not 60 fps it's just like maybe like 45 mm. and then it drops again so it's just it's a handheld you know it's it's yeah. it's a fun thing but it's not it it's needs to be the... like somewhere on like a place that never moves and done. It's almost like a laptop. It's also what uh, in the in the chat on Facebook people are saying. Like Richard Boris says that Nintendo VR is probably for Labo uh, or for the robot experience. And I think that's a, that's a pretty good call. That it's indeed like you know to extend that kit from a Nintendo Labo a bit more yes. uh, to make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> it would be a great combination having the Labo stuff, the cardboard stuff with like yeah. a VR headset. That's mm. nice. 
I, I have to say, Labo, having just cracked into that the first time this week, um, surprised me a few ways. Like, I mean, what, the first thing they have you do when you're assembling it is like a little is a little car, and you slot in bits, and it, it allows the car to kind of move. What I didn't expect it to have on board was a camera. Like, you can literally move this thing along, and one of the infrared sensors in one of the controllers turns into a fa- forward-facing camera. Wow. That almost looks like it's like a nighttime sensor. And so you're like moving this thing around, and you can like walk up to someone's face or an object. You can actually steer it like you would like a remote piloted drone. It, it's cool. I mean, they they really know how to push their stuff. It's, yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah, that's that's the way I kind of envisaged it in my mind, rather than like another headset. But Nathy's idea of like maybe an external plug-in headset, like the PSVR, you can maybe use it in dock yeah. mode or something like that, might be kind of interesting as well. It does use USB C after all, so. They, they they are going to create their own thing. Like after um, Mike tried Mario Kart, I'm like, just bring it out on Steam and then make some oh. PC stuff. Nintendo's not gonna like join it. See the side. money <laughs> rolling in. The, 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 the things I would do. The things I would do to play Mario Kart VR at home. Like explain. I think. Explain. Do, what, what are the I things? Seen things. What, 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 let, me, let me ask the chat. What are the things that Mike should do to get Mario Kart in VR? That, that's I'll what take I one for the team. That's I'll what. take one for the team for you guys. Yeah, but I, I would. I, I would go out and buy a, like a full racing chair and a steering wheel and, and everything in a heartbeat if they said that they're bringing Mario Kart VR to the home. I would. I feel like the circle is just not complete yet. Uh, Sony the made life. a place that, yeah, well, like like that, the co- the consoles of, of life, you know, but it's, it's really like we have... The, the the PlayStation VR now Xbox still didn't do anything like first Xbox needs to do something and then we will maybe see Nintendo do something like those two have still not really joined the party in any way so yeah and it's not we, like the, the circle of consoles not the consoles of life it sounds cool too but it doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah so that is the end of uh, this week's show so if you've got any questions maybe just chuck them in the chat yeah and ask some questions and then mm. we'll wrap it up yeah we we have already like a few good suggestions for you as well uh Mike. oh, uh, Paradise oh. Decay says, uh <laughs> wear a wig uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Why don't you just buy Nintendo and then license it to Steam? So, you can oh yeah, that, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine you 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 doing that. I, just, yeah. get, just get my wallet out. Yeah, yeah. there you there go. You go. <laughs> that YouTube money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> YouTube money. <laughs> uh, uh, cool. Let's well, so wrap. Good first episode, hasn't it, lads? I mean, this is the start of an era for us, and. Um, yeah. More to yeah, come. very cool. Special. Like you know, very exciting to start uh, our brand new show. You know, brand new platforms. You know, yes. streaming to Twitch as well and Facebook, which is yeah. a first for us. So you know, it'd be really interesting to see if we've got like a, a group of people watching over there. Uh, love for you to get involved, and you know, you can check out the audio version as well. But I'll just stick the reminders up now, and then uh, we can maybe answer a couple more questions before we finally say goodbye. But just a reminder, you know, we we stream this live every Saturday on the YouTube channel, Twitch, and Facebook live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, 12 midday in Central US. If you missed the live stream, don't worry, we take it down and then we re-upload uh, the the show, the whole show with like. the the best possible audio so you can hear our lovely dulcet tones Uh, or you can just check out the audio only version which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes and on SoundCloud. So yeah, if you've got any questions chuck them in now and then uh, before we say goodbye. Lots of people are saying um, fantastic re-debut gentlemen good first episode, congrats and hopefully catching more. You guys are going to rock it Uh, congrats on the new format, really great recap of news and impressions, 10 out of 10 so yeah, guys, thank you for the feedback Yes, appreciate it. Appreciate that Lovely. a lot. We got another suggestion Lovely. for Mike, by the way, re- really quickly. Okay. Uh, uh, William says, uh, Mike, walk into a psychologist's office wearing only plastic wrap so they can clearly see your nuts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I, I would do that for you guys and girls. I would if 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 like if Nind- yeah. Nintendo said, "Look, we will bring this home." If Mike does this, then okay, I would do it for you. I would do it. For you. I, I think Nintendo's it. now gonna do it because they uh, and, and well, they, they want to see you suffer a bit on, on like. Uh, I want to see my nuts, apparently. So N- Nintendo is directly yeah. listening. There was one question here in chat on uh, on YouTube. Uh, Chris Cox asks, "Did you talk about Electronauts last week?" Uh, yes, we said it was releasing uh, last week, uh, but we haven't talked about it anymore. We will be talking about it more maybe next episode because we have some plans to play it this week. So 
yeah, we will probably be talking about it more next week for sure. If you're interested, check out all that mess. Right. So we're going to wrap this one up. I hope you guys and girls have enjoyed this one. Enjoyed the new format. Thank you so much for the comments and feedback and the support. We love you all. And uh, yeah, have a great week in the metaverse and we'll see you at the same time next week. So until then, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.